Hello, my name is Christian Roll, and I'm the Chief Evangelist at Cedaro. And with me today, I have Roger Light, the project lead of the Eclipse Mosquito MQTT project. It's a great pleasure to have you here today. Thank you. Roger, the Mosquito project is the most popular MQTT implementation in the world. It's open source, and there are hundreds of thousands, probably even millions of installations worldwide. In a nutshell, can you explain to us what MQTT is all about? Sure. So, MQTT is an internet communication protocol. It was invented uh, 20 years ago and it uses the publish-subscribe model for transmitting and receiving data. It is uh, it's very lightweight, so it's really well suited to constrained devices, but equally it can scale up to much bigger situations like having millions of devices all transmitting data at the same time. Um, if you want a comparison of the, sort of the concept of MQTT with something more familiar, then if I say that uh, HTTP was originally intended for transmitting and receiving documents. By comparison, MQTT is much more about transmitting and receiving data. Yeah, that makes it very clear. So, whatever HTTP is for documents, that is what the MQTT is, is for data. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. But tell me, what kind of data can you transmit with MQTT? Well, actually, MQTT. Um, it, it doesn't look at the payload, it doesn't look at the message that you're sending, mm -hmm. uh, so you can really send whatever you want. Um, so you could send, for example, a, a, just a plain text string, mm -hmm. maybe some binary, like a, like a picture. Uh, you could send semantic data, or uh, what's a really popular choice is to use JSON data. Okay, so JSON, so we have a look at JSON later on in this session. Mm -hmm. Why did you call it Mosquito? Well, I mean, that's, that's fairly straightforward, really. I, I wanted a distinctive name, um, something that sounded good, but also that included the MQTT part of it. So if I'm a mosquito, all I had to do was add the extra T, yeah. and, and there we go. Well, I really like the name. It's a, it's a perfect choice. Perfect. So, the Sedala sponsors the development of the Mosquito Broker, and also the Streamsheet Server, which is a, a perfect front-end if you deal with MQTT and, and JSON data. So I asked Roger to give a short introduction to JSON and MQTT in a separate video session that we recorded just before this interview. Christian has asked me to give an introduction to JSON and MQTT. So let's start with JSON, which is an object that can be used to encapsulate lots of different pieces of data. So before we go on to that, perhaps it's best to have a little bit of a talk about what data is. So I have some examples here. One, two, three, cologne, and true. These are all different types of data. So one, two, three is a number. Cologne, a string, and true is a boolean. Now all of these have one thing in common, and that is they are values. Um, without any further context, it can be very difficult to understand what these values actually mean. If we want to do that, if we want to add that context, then we can add a key. Okay, so we can say that our one, two, three is representing a length, cologne is representing a town, and true is representing a visibility of something or other. Okay, so we have this key and a value, gives us more context about the data. Now if we want to turn that into a JSON object, what we do, it's very straightforward, we simply enclose the different objects in these curly brackets as you can see. So we now have a JSON object here, and we can apply the same thing to our other examples. So we now have three separate JSON objects, which is fantastic, but what if we want to combine them all together to a single JSON object? Well, that's straightforward as well. We add some curly brackets at the top and the bottom, and then we add a further uh, key, which here is the sample data key, and the value for that is our length, town, and visible objects, which we had before. Okay, so we've got two pieces of nested data, for the sample data with the length, town, and visible nested beneath it. Combine them all together, we get the JSON object as we see here. Now, there's a lot of syntax there, which is very necessary, strictly necessary to be true JSON, but it's, it's kind of technical. We don't really need to know that in order to be able to know about our data structure. So is there a way that we can make that more user friendly? Well, we've tried to do that here by taking our key values and uh, color coding them as to the different data types that they are represent. You can also see that we have indented the length, town, and visible objects by a small amount in order to indicate that they are children objects of the sample data key. Finally, on the right-hand side, the one, two, three 
uh, Cologne and True column indicate the values of those other three objects. Okay, so this gives us this gives us a very visual, very easy to uh, grasp version of JSON, um, which I'm sure you'll agree. Now, what we've done here is taken that format and put it straight into Stream Sheets. Um, so it looks exactly the same. It's very straightforward to produce this data type in Stream Sheets and use it um, for whatever purposes you need. Now, we have that payload, but of course we want to do something with it. And probably the most common thing we want to do with JSON is to transmit it as a message. So how are we going to do that? Okay, well, we're going to use MQTT. Uh, so I'm going to talk about that in the, in the slides that follow. So here I have an empty message ready for a payload. Okay, we've also got a payload that we produced on our previous slide. There's our nice visual form of it. But of course, we know that in the background of that visual form, it's actually a real JSON. We're just hiding that because there's no need for it. So we combine those two, we get a message with a payload. And for the slides that follow, I'm going to use this icon here, a simplified version, which indicates our message being transmitted as it moves. So now to the MQTT part, we have a broker in the middle uh, with a publisher and a subscriber connected to it. And they communicate over some channels, over two channels. Okay, so you can see on the left, we have our publisher producing messages. And that could be uh, some machine, a sensor, that sort of thing. On the right hand side, we have our uh, subscriber, which in this case is our stream sheet, which every time it receives a piece of data, it's processing, processing it in some fashion or other. Now, the interesting thing here is that um, the publisher and the subscriber actually don't even need to know that each other exists. The publisher can publish. If something happens to be subscribing to it, then that's fine. It will receive the messages, but there's no need for that, uh, that knowledge of a publisher or a subscriber to exist. It all goes through the broker. That's how it's been designed. So we're going to move on to the more detail now about how this actually works. So I will say, remind you, we've got our publisher on our left, subscriber on the right. And how do they actually communicate? Well, that happens over topics. This is an MQTT concept of what a channel is. Okay, so here in our broker, we've got an ABC topic and an XYZ topic. So the publisher and the subscriber are both going to use the ABC topics for their communication. So this, this looks exactly as it did before, but now we know which topic they are communicating on. Okay, the XYZ topic in this example is completely unused, so no message is being sent or received. Now, of course, MQTT allows millions of simultaneous topics. And this in this example, we have exactly the same at the top, but at the bottom, we've now introduced a second publisher and a second subscriber that are communicating with one another over topic XYZ. And of course, they don't receive the messages from the other topics. So we can extend this model further. Multiple subscribers can subscribe to the same topic. We have our publisher on ABC, two subscribers now there, and every time the broker receives a message from the publisher, it will send that message to both of our two subscribers, exactly as you can see here. We can also see uh, the case where multiple publishers publish to the same topic. So here again, two publishers, a single subscriber, and we have them publishing at a, at a different time interval so that it's very clear that the subscriber is receiving both of those messages from the two publishers at the same time. Um, another example here, a subscriber can subscribe to multiple topics. So we've got a publisher on ABC and a publisher on XYZ. The subscriber here is listening to both topics and it receives both of the messages from both of the publishers. And the same thing happens in the opposite case as well. We've got a publisher publishing on multiple topics and then two subscribers receiving those messages. And of course, I'm sure you can see there are many examples of how you could combine these uh, different scenarios that we've described. Um, a client need not be just publishing or subscribing. It could publish on one channel, subscribe on a different channel. Many variations that you can think of. Um, MQTT topics are extremely flexible. You can do lots of things, make your life very easy. Roger, it was a pleasure having you here. Thank you for explaining about the Mosquito Project and the technology behind it. It's already amazing what you have achieved and we really look forward for the future development of the project. Well, thank you very much. Well, thank you for watching and stay tuned.